Presidents have to be given total immunity. They have to be allowed to do their job. The Supreme Court partially siding with former President Donald Trump in his ongoing January 6th case, ruling that former presidents are entitled to some immunity from prosecution for official actions, but not for private conduct. In the 6-3 opinion, Chief Justice John Roberts writing for the majority, at least with respect to the president's exercise of his core constitutional powers, this immunity must be absolute. The president enjoys no immunity for his unofficial acts, and not everything the president does is official. The president is not above the law. The high court, though, leaving it up to lower courts to determine which actions are official and therefore immune. Roberts writing other allegations, such as those involving Trump's interactions with the vice president, state officials, and certain private parties, and his comments to the general public, present more difficult questions. Meaning District Court Judge Tanya Chutkin, who is overseeing Trump's January 6th case, will need to decide whether Mr. Trump's president pressure nice campaign to get power. Vice President Pence. If Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. Georgia state officials. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. And others to overturn the 2020 election results were official acts. Trump celebrating the decision on social media, posting big win for our constitution and democracy. Justice Sonia Sotomayor dissenting from the majority opinion, writing, the relationship between the president and the people he serves has shifted irrevocably. In every use of official power, the president is now a king above the law, something she and other liberal justices warned about during oral arguments in April. I'm trying to understand what the disincentive is from turning the Oval Office into, uh, you know, the, 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 the seat of criminal activity in this country. The decision today likely to hamstring special counsel Jack Smith's election subversion case. Charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. Roberts making clear in his majority opinion that Trump's discussions with Justice Department officials and his official conversations with the then vice president are immune. And in another blow for Smith, Roberts says Trump's official acts cannot be considered even as evidence at trial. A trial in this case, though, now highly unlikely before the November election. The Supreme Court ruled Monday that Donald Trump may claim immunity from criminal prosecution for some of the actions he took in the waning days of his presidency. They gave the president far more immunity than I think many of us had predicted. And I think what's even more notable here is the number of questions that they left open. The decision says presidents have immunity for official acts, but not all acts are official and lower courts must decide which acts qualify for each. This will likely further delay a trial on the federal election subversion charges pending against the former president. Jack Smith's federal case relating to 2020 election subversion, this now goes back to the district court, which has to hold a factual hearing to decide what was in the scope or out of the scope of the job. That in itself is appealable. In the majority opinion, Chief Justice John Roberts embraced one of the central themes raised by Trump's team that allowing prosecutors to look back at actions would potentially hurt a president's ability to do their job. The decision was 6-3 along conservative liberal lines. Justice Sonia Sotomayor did not hold back in her dissent, writing that the ruling could lead to nightmare scenarios. Let the president violate the law. Let him exploit the trappings of his office for personal gain. Let him use his official power for evil ends. Because if he knew that he may one day face liability for breaking the law, he might not be as bold and fearless as we would like him to be. That is the majority's message today.